In this video, we're going to be talking about how to get a stubborn ex back. But first, my name is Clay with ModernLove.Life, where we help you get the great loving relationship that you're looking for without having to play mind games, without having to play hard to get, and without having to pretend to be someone or something that you are not, because you deserve to be loved for the unique, amazing, and wonderful person that you are. And if you agree with me, do me a favor by giving this video a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, um, and also subscribe to this channel if you're not already subscribed. Also, I just wanted to let you know that we do have an email newsletter as well, too. You can find it down in the description box below this video. We send you some tips, advice, and strategies, and all that stuff to help you kind of navigate the challenges of getting back together with your ex. Um, go ahead and find that down below. You can also get a nice little report when you sign up. It just kind of briefly goes over some of the, you know, sacred cows that people will often tell you that you need to follow uh, when it comes to getting back together with your ex that you don't need to follow. <laughs> I guess that's, there's no simpler way to put it than that. You, you, you don't need to do these things, um, at least a lot of the time. Um, so go ahead and sign up if that seems like it's something that's interesting for you. Totally free. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and get into this. So uh, we're talking about stubborn exes. How do we get a stubborn ex to come back to us? And what we've got to do is we've got to look first at what is causing stubbornness. And there can be all sorts of different reasons, but if you boil it down, it's really about the fact that they don't trust that you have the, 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 the same intentions and the same goals and the same outcome that they want. Okay, so there's kind of that split between the two of you. That is to say, basically, that the two of you don't see each other as being on the same team. They definitely don't see you as being on the same team as them, and chances are, in a strange sort of way, you probably don't see them as being on the same team as you either. You know, you're probably walking on eggshells around them, you know, trying to overthink what you should say or what you shouldn't say, wondering how often you should text them, things like that. These are like little symptoms that maybe you aren't on the same team with them as well, too. So what you want to do first and foremost is to pull them onto the same side as you. And what that's going to do is it's going to kind of set up a, a, a momentum, a trajectory that's going to br allow the two of you to start cooperating with one another. And what this is going to do is it's going to actually start to get them to say, hey, we're actually on the same team. Now, this is really important because obviously the only reason someone needs to be stubborn or defensive or reluctant or hesitant against you and maybe what you might be trying to communicate to somebody is because they don't see you as being on the same team. But once they actually see that the two of you are on the same team, a lot of that armor, a lot of that defensiveness, a lot of that um, reservation and distance that they try to keep you at starts to go away because the two of you are on the same team. You know, you don't, you're not defensive against your teammate. You, you're just like, hey, like, hey, we're both trying to get over here. We're trying to get the ball over here. Let's, let's make it happen. And if it ever seems like your teammate is, you know, doing something weird, you just tap him on the shoulder and say, hey, what's going on? I thought we were trying to get the ball over there. Like, uh, from where I'm sitting, it doesn't seem like you're doing that. Help me understand. And that's actually the kind of dynamic that you can have with your ex. But that stubbornness is not going to get better until you actually bring them onto the same team as you. So that's why it's really important that you actually have a same team conversation with them. I know I'm really original with my titles here, but hey, whatever. Um, easy enough to remember, I suppose. But you want to actually have a same team conversation with them, where you acknowledge the dynamic that's happening right now between the two of you. You acknowledge whatever that might be. So for example, if it seems like they're putting distance between the two of you, just say, hey, it seems like you feel the need to put distance between the two of us. Like I can totally understand that, given what's going on, given our history, given our past and all of that. Um, but I don't want that to happen. Like I think that you might feel a little bit confused about how we fit into each other's lives, which might be why you are putting that distance between the two of us. And I'll admit, sometimes I feel confused as well, too. But what what about this? What if instead of us trying to figure this out on our own or trying to, you know, anticipate the other person's next move and what we should do to, uh, you know, manage that or whatever? What if we just figured this out together? What if we just admitted, hey, this is a weird situation for us to be in and let's just figure this out together? If you ever seem confused or if you ever think we're moving too fast or we're ever getting in our, over our head or something like that, just let me know and we'll correct course. And if I ever feel the same way, 
you know, I'll let you know and we can correct course. But let's not force anything that's not there and let's just enjoy having time with one another. And if you can actually have this conversation with them, it's going to go a lot better because it's going to set the two of you up to actually start working on the same team. Now, of course, they might agree to something like this, but they might be skeptical about it. And this is totally normal. This is absolutely totally normal because the two of you don't have maybe a track record of being on the same team, really, especially in recent times since the breakup. And so they might like this idea, but they might also be pretty skeptical about it as well, too. So just let that be okay and tell the two of you have a nice track record of being on the same team. They're going to be a little bit hesitant about that. Again, totally fine, totally normal, totally to be expected. Uh, but but you can start to move the ball a little bit closer and closer and closer um, to the hole by actually starting to work on the same team and actually starting to um, work cooperatively on other things. So, okay, we've had the, the big same team conversation. And what we're going to do next is do like little things in the moment to kind of work together as being on the same team. And these can be, you know, endless in terms of the, 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 the little things that we might start to do. But it can be little things like, hey, do you trust me to pick the restaurant that we go to? Do you trust me to give you a back rub? Do you trust me to um, keep a secret? Do you trust me to you know, whatever, right? And so these are like little things that you can do to start to build that same teamness. And as these things start to build up, the trust is going to start to kick in and it's going to allow your ex to kind of take off more of that armor, take off some of the stubbornness and start to actually experience the fact that the two of you are indeed on the same team. And uh, as this starts to kick in, that stubbornness is going to start to dissipate or evaporate, or disappear, or fall apart, or whatever what, whatever metaphor you want to use. We, we can use all kinds of metaphors here, but it's, it, it, it's going to not be there anymore. Um, however it is not there, that's, that's up to your imagination, but it's not going to be there anymore. Um, and so that's what, that's what basically we want to do in order to get past this stubbornness. By the way, if you want to understand kind of where your ex is at and kind of what they're thinking in this whole process of getting back together, we do have an entire video playlist on what we call the five stages that your ex goes through in getting back together. A lot of people have watched this playlist and they found it really uh, really insightful and it's been really helpful for them to understand what their ex is going through. Because um, oftentimes when we end up in these breakups, it can seem like we're in some sort of strange world where, where, where the basic laws of gravity just don't even work the way that we're accustomed to them. Um, and so if you understand kind of what's going on with your ex emotionally through the five stages of getting back together, it can really be helpful for giving you a better sense about kind of, you know, where you need to go in all of this. But um, as you start to get on the same team, you want to continue to build up the emotional connection between you and your ex. They probably like the idea of the two of you being on the same team, but they also need that emotional foundation between the two of you as well, too, to continue to increase and to continue to build that confidence that, that the two of you can fit into each other's lives in some way and that they can actually see themselves having positive interactions with you. As you continue to do this and build up that foundation beneath the two of you, they're going to naturally start to think about the two of you getting back together, and they're going to naturally start to want to even explore what that might look like. So um, definitely don't slack off on that. So we gotta, we got to take care of the whole same team aspect. We also got to take care of the emotional connection aspect as well, too, because, you know, it's not just enough to be on the same team, but you actually got to, like, have a deep emotional connection to demonstrate to them that, like, yeah, there's actually something of substance here, something that's worth getting into a relationship again about because we have that connection. You know, people want to be in a relationship because they can feel connected to someone else, not just because, like, yeah, we can work cooperatively on the same team. You know, maybe in some sort of, like, functional society or something. Thing. That might be all that you need, but um, generally for a great romantic relationship, you want to have that emotional connection in place too. So um, the, the, the same teamness does need to be in place usually first because that's going to allow them to kind of take off that armor and kind of, you know, just maybe like one little piece at a time, you know, like maybe, maybe I'll just take off this like shoulder plate. I, I don't know what the different pieces of armor or cult, but maybe I'll take off this shoulder plate first, and okay, that seems okay, maybe I'll take off the helmet, okay, that seems all right, maybe I'll take off this breastplate, maybe, okay, cool, um, and then they're going to start to build up that trust that like, yeah, as I start to open up more, um, better things happen, and that is, I think, going to help you to get back together with your stubborn ex, but after that, we do want to move on to the emotional connection. 
So if you want more help with all of that, again, we do have that free email newsletter. You can find it down in the description box, totally free to sign up, and you get that nice little report um, that goes over common misconceptions that maybe you don't even need to consider um, that maybe everyone else out there is telling you that you absolutely must do. So go ahead and check that out if that seems interesting to you and sign up if it seems right for you. But uh, thanks so much again for watching this video. Once again, if you do like what we're doing here, give us that thumbs up. It does help us out a lot. And if you want to learn more about how to develop an emotional connection with your ex, check out this video series over here on what we call advanced relational skills. These help you to take that initial connection that you have and deepen it in a much more significant way. Check it out over there or check out this video right here. But thank you so much. Please take care and I'll talk to you in the next video.